Hey guys, so today we are making this outstanding cake. It is just dripping in gold and jewels. Yas, yas to the 10th power. I'm really excited about this because it looks so bomb. So let's get started. My name is Ricky Gervais. Who is that guy? <laughs> He's from The Office. He's from the UK version of The Office. Now the base of this cake was extremely easy to make because there's no carving. I just started out with a 10 inch chocolate cake and I chose chocolate because there's nothing richer than chocolate. So rich it gives you hot blood pressure. Now I'm adding buttercream into the middle of my 10 inch cake and then I added a second layer of chocolate. I'm just gonna add buttercream to the outside and give my entire cake a crumb coat. Now, you can totally give this cake a second coat of buttercream, but guess who has two thumbs and is trying to save some coin? This guy. Some of my jokes are so cringy, I'm sorry. Now I'm just going to smoothen my buttercream out with this cake smoothener thingy that's white, very white and smooth cakes things out very smooth with a cake smoother of the cakes. Once I was happy with this coat of buttercream, I placed my cake into the fridge for about two hours and I was Netflix and chilling. I started one of my favorite shows on Netflix, One Day at a Time, One Day at a Time. The third season just came out, so I was watching that. It's really funny, it's really corny. There's more corn than like a 10 acre cornfield. But I love it, I love the situations that the characters get themselves into and I love how much heart there is. I love the way that they're handling like modern day problems as well as like family issues and I think that the ensemble cast is great. The grandma especially, she's my favorite. Now if you've seen the show already, let me know in the comments what you think. What do you think about the third season? The father-daughter dance? I almost cried. It was beautiful. I thought the sentiment was so beautiful. And this crown has some very luscious red velvet fabric in the middle. And because I wanted the fondant to mimic fabric, I added some pieces of white fondant to give it texture on top. And then I covered my entire cake with a large piece of red fondant. Just on top. Just draped it over my entire cake and made sure that I highlighted all of the white fondant underneath. So that way I can make it look like fabric folds. Yeah, doesn't it? It looks like very fabric foldy. Just worked my red fondant all the way down my cake. Smoothened the sides with my cake fondant smoothener outener. Very amazing iron looking fondant smoothener outener. Wow, works so very well. I did a good job. There's hardly any folds at the bottom. It looks like a professional job, doesn't it? I cut away the excess with the paring knife and then I started to build my crown. I just paneled a very long strip around my entire cake. I feel like each crown cake is going to be different from the next. It kind of just all depends on what you want your crown to look like. This crown was modeled after a sketch that I drew on a sticky pad. Look at that. I only drew half of it. And these are codes to a game that I'm playing. I don't have time to play the game properly so that's why I use cheats. I created some very loose templates to create this crown, but my design kept changing as I was adding the fondant to the cake. Just do what you think looks nice, right? Add as much detail, spend as much time as you'd like. I just wrapped the brown fondant all the way around the cake, and I'm using these tiny metallic wires. I think these are for like fondant roses or sugar paste roses. I'm just using them to hold up the long pieces of fondant that create the tip of the crown. Now, it just gives it some support until it stiffens up. They're very flimsy because it is fondant. Uh, now this is starting to look pretty cool, but I wanted to add drama to this cake. I didn't think it was high enough, so I added some more brown fondant so that it would just stand extremely tall. Now to hold this piece of fondant up, I'm adding a dowel to the back. I removed the pixie sticks and I'm just sticking all of this together with magic sauce. 
If you don't want to use dowels, I don't know what you're going to do. You could use like uncooked spaghetti. That's a very risky game you're playing though. You must be a poker player. You're playing a very risky game. I wanted this crown to have three different tips. Um, and I don't know what this is called. I tried looking up the terminology for the different parts of the crown, but I just kept getting pictures of teeth. And I cut out some smaller, sharp pieces of fondant. They're almost like arrowheads. And I just applied them to the sides of the crown with a dowel behind each one. Those dowels are holding everything up. Again, you can use spaghetti if you want. I feel like the people who use spaghetti are the same people that go skydiving and bungee jumping. Oh gosh, that's a lot of risk that I'm not willing to take. I even added a small decoration just to cover up the seam at the back. And I wanted this cake to have a lot of detail, so I'm adding very thin layers of fondant to my crown, applying them to the base as well as the tip of the crown. You can add as much or as little detail as you want, but remember, the devil is in the detail, and I'm the devil. I'm also a she-wolf, according to Shakira. And I'm the second favorite son, according to my mom. Now I added just a little bit of CMC to all of the mustard brown fondant so that it would be a little bit more stiff. And the thinner pieces of fondant, I let them set for like four or five hours just so that they would get hard and I could get those nice clean edges. You see me in the background doing all that work? Look at that. I've been working out you guys, but you can't really tell because you can still see that pudge at the bottom of my belly. And I found these edible jewels on Etsy. They look expensive. You know why? Because they are expensive. I really wanted them for this cake, so that's why I just like gave them my money. And I placed each of my jewels on top of this beautiful fondant flower that I created using my gorgeous fondant cutter. And I'm using white fondant because each of the jewels is like a little translucent, so I wanted to make sure that the color wasn't affected by the mustard brown fondant. I'm just adding each of my jewels to my extravagant crown. Wow. And then I started to add some piping detail with royal icing. So I was having a little bit of trouble with my royal icing. When it was too thick, it was hard to pipe. And then when I thinned it out, it like wouldn't hold its shape. So I added on some very generic store-bought frosting. For every cup, I added like two tablespoons of like this store-bought frosting. So I made my roll icing super thick. I thinned it out with my store-bought frosting. It was easier to pipe and it held its shape. Do professional people do that? I don't know. I don't care. I do what I want. <laughs> you can totally do this with like fondant molds, but I thought that would take too much time. And I'm very carefully just piping out what I think crown details look like. And I'm kind of just making it up as I go. Like, like life, or love, or crowns. Did I tell you guys I'm a she-wolf? I'm using a Wilton's number five star tip as well as a number three round tip. I thought that the detail from these two tips looked really fancy and gave it a lot of depth. It looks like a gingerbread crown, doesn't it? You got all these different colors, the white pops, but as soon as we start adding luster dust, that'll all change. Once I was happy with all my crown detail, I started to paint on some luster dust. I liquefied some gold luster dust in some magic sauce and then painted it on with a paintbrush. Just covered every single part of my mustard brown fondant as well as all of my brown detail. The only things I didn't paint are the velvety red fabric and the jewels. Oh, and I even covered the dowels with fondant too. Remember, you can use spaghetti, but I feel like people who use spaghetti are the same people who take out loans with the mafia. That's too risky for me. Once I finished painting my beautiful crown, this extravagant cake was complete. This is money. Cardi B could rock this. I love how the separate pieces of fondant add depth to the crown tips and all of these edible jewels, they sparkle like there's no tomorrow. This is like the crown I'd want to wear if I won like prom king, but I didn't win prom king because I wasn't popular. <laughs> Nobody knew I existed. 
My prom was terrible, you guys. On a side note, how did your prom go? Did you have a good time? Wow, congratulations. You were prom queen, wow. Congratulations. Now when I was sketching this cake, I actually sketched three more crowns out. I made a Spice Girls crown. I made a princess crown. And I made like a evil witch. Yo, it looks pretty sick. I'm hesitant to make the cakes though, just because I'm not sure if you guys want to watch me make another crown. So if you do, let me know in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I love you. I will see you very soon. Peace.